Question three asks, what specific steps have you taken to improve your teaching practice over time? Describe a time when you intentionally developed one aspect of your practice. What did you do? Why? And what was the outcome? You may provide examples of lessons or activities you have revised based on reflection or learning. So in the winter of 2011, I approached my principal about taking on a new experimental reading class across the school and across the Noble Network, and indeed across the city and the country. Um, reading is one of the most difficult areas to, in which to achieve student growth. Uh, we, as a school and as a network, have been achieving excellent ACT growth in math, English, and science, but we were struggling in reading year after year after year. Now, as a theater arts teacher, I've been working on reading skills in my classroom for a while, but I was convinced that there was a better way to teach reading, and I wanted to try it. In my classroom, I was reluctantly trying the same types of practices that were being explored across the campus and the city with middling results. These practices centered on a more traditional I do, we do, you do format for each of the ACT college writing standards, including making generalizations, identifying main idea, determining meaning of words, etc. Now, each of the CRS reading skills are undoubtedly important, of course, and I wanted my students to do well on the test. However, teaching CRS directly never really felt like teaching reading, and most of the English teachers I encountered were not only frustrated with their results, but also found their approach to be unnatural and often boring. My principal was generous enough to grant me a single class section that we came to call Innovative Literacy. With the 19 students in that class, I set out to improve my own reading instruction hoping to help my students reach exceptional growth along the way. My bigger goal, though, was to find a way to teach reading that was natural for the teacher and enjoyable for everyone while producing excellent results. And I'm lucky enough to work at the kind of school where innovative ideas are celebrated and people are open to changing their practices if something is proven to work. So I went in with the goal of not only improving my own reading instruction, but also the reading instruction of my colleagues. I was being given a blank slate, and I knew that if my students excelled, the door would open to a wider exploration across the campus of less traditional approaches to reading. My less traditional approach, of course, still needed to include constant data, constant student assessment, and teaching of skills. However, beyond these basic elements, I designed a classroom that looked almost nothing like what I'd seen around me before, and certainly uh, nothing like what I've been doing myself. The fundamental tenets of the class developed over time through experimentation, through thought partnering with colleagues, and to a degree uh, through research as well as intuition. In the class's first year, the innovative literacy students nearly tripled our school's previous reading growth and more than doubled the Noble Network average with 2.7 points of growth on the ACT reading test. 40% of the class achieved four or more points of growth. And the class has now quadrupled in size this year Rather than 19 students in one section, I have roughly 80 students over four sections. Uh, the class has also become one of the templates for a revised, a revised approach to teaching among our more experienced and accomplished staff members campus-wide. And the Innovative Literacy class has come to be seen as a model uh, for our campus as we prioritize creating more rigorous classrooms and more, rigor more rigorous approaches to teaching and learning. So here's how the class has come to operate. The philosophy of innovative literacy is, uh, has a couple of key components. One is that the students can only become great at something if they love doing it and do it a lot. Uh, so there's this element of reading love that goes into it. You can get good at something if you don't love it, but you can, can't get great at something if you don't love it. So I really push the loving uh, the reading, the getting interested in the reading, the enjoyment aspect of it. Uh, students. I believe become better readers by first learning what real reading is, which is actively making meaning of text. For some students that takes a long time to figure out, but it's not just going from one word at the beginning to the last word at the end and doing your homework, but rather actively making meaning on the way. Um, and then they need to practice this skill constantly by reading text and writing about it before they get to class, and then in class discussing and continuing to write about that text. The other thing that is important to the philosophy of the class is that students need to shrink what I call their circle of boring, uh, which is to say that high school students especially have a very large circle of boring. In other words, most types of reading fall within their circle of boring. Most things for high school students that aren't directly about subject matter that they might find interesting right off the bat. And so a part of the class is about finding ways to shrink our circle of boring. 
In other words, to find ways to get interested in subject matter and in articles and in types of reading that they may not have been interested in when they got to class. Because what happens is that once you get interested, you start enjoying, and once you start enjoying, you put in more effort, and once you're putting in more effort, you comprehend better. And then that cycle repeats itself. Better comprehension leads to a higher level of uh, enjoyment, which leads to an even higher level of effort and a higher level of understanding. In terms of the goals, we have three goals, three key goals in the class. One is that students become lifelong readers, so I want them to take what they've learned here and keep it going. Uh, I always talk to them about how I'd love to run into them years from now in a coffee shop, reading just for fun, just for the heck of it. Um, I want students to become great at three key things. One is reading, the second is writing about what they've read, and the third is talking about what they've read. And so for that reason, we do almost nothing else other than those three things. Uh, and I want uh, to improve on last year's growth, and we're shooting actually for an average of four points of reading growth on the ACT this year, which 40% of last year's Innovative Lit students achieved last year, and I'm looking to up that so that that's actually our class average this year. Uh, as I mentioned, we have core values. They are uh, dedication, optimism, clarity, confidence, and synergy. These core values were developed by the students in Innovative Literacy last year, and they're constantly reinforced um, through discussions and through evaluations, and students' performance across these five values are actually just as heavily weighted as their daily quizzes are in class. As far as expectations go, there are a few key things that are different in my class from classes that I have taught before. One is that homework becomes preparation as opposed to just merely practice. So if you don't do the homework well, you're not ready to come to class. That means that the lectures are neither given in class, but they're on YouTube and they're watched as preparation. That means that the readings are done ahead of time as opposed to in class, so that we can get into the really meaty, skill-based discussions in class, as opposed to still trying to slog through basic comprehension in class. Um, I also believe that reading means understanding. If they've done anything less than completely understand what they've read, then they actually haven't read at all. Students are held accountable to their groups in my class. They're expected to ask for help, and they're expected to make each other better through the quality of their preparation and through, their, uh, through the degree to which uh, they display the core values. Um, the structures in the class are very, very predictable. Essentially, students come in, and there's a quiz at the beginning of every single period. It's a basic reading comprehension quiz. It's an open note, open annotation quiz. They pull out the reading that they've done, and they have a one minute per question for about eight to 10 questions. And that's just a simple check for either you did the work, meaning you understood the article, or you didn't do the work. Uh, anything below a 70% on that quiz uh, goes in as a zero. Uh, so they either need to come in truly comprehending it or not, but there's no, there's no middle ground. There's no credit for only understanding half the article. Um, students, if they miss class, uh, they, can make the quizzes up by typing a one-page summary of the reading. I don't do make-up quizzes. That allows me to then get quizzes back faster to the students who are present instead of having to hold on to them to wait for everybody else to do the makeup. And that makes the class much more efficient. As far as what I'm actually teaching, the skills themselves, I've basically broken it down to eight reading skills. So we have the three basic skills, which are previewing, annotating, and outlining. We have the big four skills, which are paraphrasing, summarizing, identifying author's approach, and vocabulary. And then we have analysis. These three basic skills make up a lot of the first semester. These big four skills are what they're asked about on their quizzes on a daily basis. And then analysis comes towards the end of the year once we have the other seven skills under wraps and students have really come to understand what it means to truly comprehend their reading. This class is an extremely difficult class. It's difficult to do well, uh, but when students are preparing well and are putting in maximum effort and displaying the core values, they thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy their time here. They enjoy how high the expectation is, and uh, by keeping it that way each and every day, there's a sense of predictability that allows them to learn how to excel and then to do it again and again and again.